Hello. Today we'll look at a theorem in the theory of Newtonian gravitation. It is called the Shell theorem. It says a spherically symmetric body affects external objects gravitationally as though all of its mass were concentrated at a point at its center.、Um, this result first appeared in Newton's Principia, published in 1687. It appeared in section 12 of the Principia of the attractive forces of spherical bodies. The result we just stated is a paraphrase of theorem 31, and Newton's original proof is highly geometrical and verbal. The other part of the Shell theorem is theorem 30 in the Principia, which we shall not discuss today. So, in this diagram, we have a spherically symmetric body with mass capital M. And we wish to calculate the gravitational force experienced by a particle with mass little m located outside of the spherical body. We wish to prove the following result: that is, the gravitational force experienced by the point mass little m is given by g times big M times little m divided by l squared, with the attractive force pointing towards the center of the spherical body. So basically, the result says that the inverse square law for the gravitational force. Which was originally postulated to hold between point masses, but now, according to this result, we can apply the inverse square law to spherically symmetric bodies. So I'm not going to use Newton's original method to solve this problem. Instead, I will use triple integral. Perhaps this solution will seem quite mundane in comparison to Newton's ingenuity, but it is an important application of triple integrals. So first, let's consider a volume element of the body dV. Because of the spherical symmetry of the problem, we decide to use the spherical coordinate system. That is, the location of the volume element is specified by these three numbers: r, the distance from the origin; theta, the azimuth angle; and phi, the inclination angle. Where little r is between zero and big R, big R is the radius of the spherical body. The azimuth angle theta ranges from zero to two pi, angle phi, which ranges from zero to pi. The formula of the volume element in spherical coordinate is given by dV equals to r squared times sine phi times d phi times d theta times dr. We then treat the volume element as a particle. It would exert a gravitational force dF upon the particle m. dF can then be decomposed into two orthogonal components as shown. With the radial components pointing towards the center of big M, this is the only component we need to consider, because the normal component would cancel in the integration due to axial symmetry. Let's draw a bigger picture of the triangle in question to see what's going on. The three vertices of the triangle are the particle M, the origin O, and the volume element. We denote the opposite angle of R as alpha. And we denote the opposite side of the angle phi as d. As argued, we would like to express the radial component of the force dF, denoted as dF parallel. The first one is the magnitude of dF, given by the inverse square law. Here, rho denotes the mass density of the spherical body, so the volume element has mass rho times dV. dF parallel is just dF times cosine of alpha, due to orthogonal projection. By the law of cosine, d squared equals to l squared plus r squared minus 2 lr times cosine of phi. And lastly, cosine of alpha is l minus r times cosine of phi divided by d. To see this, we may draw a height in the triangle. So now we have two right triangles. This side is r times cosine of phi. So this side in the upper right triangle is l minus r times cosine of phi. Divide by the hypotenuse d, we get the cosine of alpha. So now let's put these four relations, as well as the expression for dV, together to set up the integral. So here on the left panel, it contains all the important relationships we developed so far. From these, we can get an expression for dF parallel in terms of the spherical coordinates. This is rather straightforward; just simple substitution. This is the result. We can finally set up the integral. The total force acting on the particle m is the integral of dF parallel, where the integral is taken over the spherical body. Using the expression of dF parallel we obtained earlier, 
we now have a triple integral representing f. Notice that in the integrand, the variable theta is missing, so theta can immediately be integrated. This will result in a factor of 2 pi at the front, and now we have a double integral to evaluate. The inner integral, i.e. the integral with respect to phi, can be solved by a u substitution. This is because we notice that there is a cosine of phi and the factor sine of phi times d phi. So let's make the u substitution u equals to l squared plus r squared minus 2lr times cosine of phi. And as we shall see, the rest of the calculations will be fairly routine. We have cosine of phi in terms of u, that is l squared plus r squared minus u divided by 2lr. Taking differential on both sides of the substitution, and we get du equals to 2lr times sine phi times d phi. We also need to replace the integration limits. When phi is equal to 0, u is l squared plus r squared minus 2lr, which is just l minus r squared. And similarly, the new upper limit is the value of u when phi is equal to pi. And this gives us l plus r squared. So at this point, we are ready to evaluate the inner integral of the double integral. The computation is entirely straightforward, so I will not read through each line. You may pause the video to verify the details if you wish. And the end result is fairly simple. It's just 2r squared divided by l squared. And that's the result of the inner integral. Just one more integration with respect to r, and we're done. The final integration is also very simple. And we get g times m times rho times 4 over 3 times pi times r cubed divided by l squared. But notice that 4 third times pi times r cubed is just the volume of the sphere. Multiply that by the density, and we get the total mass, big M, of the spherical body. So the result now reads g times little m times big M divided by the distance between the point mass and the center of the spherical body, that is L, squared. And this is exactly what we wanted, and this finishes the proof. And that's the end of today's video. If you enjoy my content, please consider like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.